This is the DXP 4800 Plus from Ukraine. There are two massive upgrades this thing has over my Synology NAS, which prompted me to look into getting my hands on one, and which I think makes it worth the extra money. Thing one, this not only has these four bays for hard drives, double the capacity of my Synology two bay, but on the bottom here, there are also two more bays for M.2 NVMe drives. If you're unaware, there are essentially three main types of computer storage, hard drives, SATA SSDs and NVMe SSDs. These are like five to 10 times faster than these. And these can be like a hundred times faster at sustained reading and writing than these. This is an NVMe SSD. This is what's in a MacBook. The four main bays on this thing can accept either of these two types of drives. These actually have the same connectors on the bottom. They're the same interface. These little plastic cartridges just pull out and then the bottom of them just extend out and the drive just comes right out. You don't even need any tools. So when expanding or replacing these things, there are these little rubber grabby arms in here that just kind of give your drive a bear hug. This thing clips closed and then everything's just designed so that it aligns perfectly and all the plugs just plug back in when you slide it in. And with the addition of the NVMe slots, plus this next thing, makes this NAS a whole lot more capable than my old one. And that next thing is this 10 gigabit network port on the back. That is 10 gigabits, not to be confused with 10 gigabytes. It's really annoying that we use both of those terms for data. But basically, if you have a 10 gigabit network that this thing lives on, well, now you essentially have, in my case, a two terabyte NVMe external drive always connected to your computer. Even over Wi-Fi, that can read and write at one gigabyte per second, which opens up the use of things like virtual machines. I can run Windows in parallels on my Mac where the entire Windows drive just lives on this thing on a shelf over in the corner of the, of the studio. And there's pretty much no performance hit. Side note, writing that one last line into this video sent me down a rabbit hole that took like six hours of my life. Setting up parallels, downloading Windows, downloading every Windows app that I ever used to make sure that I wasn't lying. And what do you know, my Mac studio can even play Anno 1800 on Windows over parallels, over the network, through Steam at 4K resolution, what a time to be alive. I can edit super dense, super large Final Cut Pro video project files on my Mac without the file ever touching my Mac's internal drive. And these video project files can be really big, like approaching 100 gigabytes each since I'm shooting in 4K with multiple cameras. This video edit you're seeing here is with four simultaneous 4K camera angles all playing back at once, each shot at I think 50 megabits per second. So there's just a lot of data that has to move across the network pretty consistently for this to work. And it works, as far as I can tell, just as smoothly is when the files are on my internal drive on my Mac. Because with the 10 gig network port, you basically have the same speed as USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, which is also 10 gigabits per second. And not a confusing naming structure at all. Magnetic fan cover for cleaning. So for my YouTube workflow, here's how I'm using this thing now. You can set this thing up in JBOD, just a bunch of disks. RAID 0 to collect a bunch of drives into one and make them fast. RAID 1 for mirrored drives. Or RAID 5, 6, and 10. I've turned this thing into three storage volumes in RAID 1. So of the four four terabyte drives in here, I get back two four terabyte drives, and there's two copies of each of them. And then same with the NVMEs, there are two two terabyte drives in here, and they mount on my computer as one two terabyte drive that's mirrored across them both. So if ever a manufacturer defect kicks in unexpectedly on either one of these drives, I can just replace the other side of that mirror, it automatically copies itself back over and no data is lost. After recording a video, I have the Ugreen NVMe drive mounted on my Mac over the network. Final Cut Pro sees it and I'll start a new library file on that drive for each video project. Which means when importing video from my camera after shooting, that footage will never actually touch my Mac Studio's internal drive. It just goes straight into the NAS. I'll edit and export from the NAS's internal NVMe drives. And when I'm done with the project, I'll move it over to the NAS RAID 1 hard disk drive for longer term storage. The NVMe is fast enough and responsive enough to edit directly off of because of the 10 gig networking. And the hard disks in here are big enough that I can just keep everything. And that way I'm able to quickly and easily call up B-roll from any video I've ever made because they're all stored in one spot. It's got a real big fan in the case. And mainly why that's good, what a bigger fan equates to is a quieter fan. You can't actually hear this when it's running at all. I think the hard drives themselves are louder than this fan. Inside, the DXP4800 Plus has a 12th gen 5 core Intel processor, the Pentium Gold 8505. It has one performance core with hyper threading and then four efficiency cores. They picked that so it can do hard stuff in bursts, like if you're running a Minecraft server on it. It can totally keep up with a bunch of players all in one world, but it can also use a lot less electricity when it's just doing easy stuff, like serving files and videos over the network. And since it has five cores, six threads,
threads, it can do both of those things simultaneously and silently. When all four discs are spinning, this thing is pulling about 40 watts. And if you let the drive spin down, it only pulls about 12 watts. And at my house, 12 watts costs about 18 cents every 1,000 hours. So it's pretty cheap to just leave this thing running all the time. The RAM is expandable on this machine and it takes DDR5 laptop chips. I'll put a link below in case you wanna increase your RAM. And initially, I didn't see any reason to expand the RAM of a NAS since I was just gonna use it as a file dump, a Plex server, and probably a Minecraft server. And none of those things use more than like four gigs of RAM. But then I learned about RAM caching the drive when transferring huge files and how good Linux is at handling that. This thing runs on Linux. I'm gonna stop handling this RAM. So check this out a little proof of concept. Spinning hard drives are super slow. So if I drop this 22 gigabyte video project file from my Mac to the second storage pool, that's two spinning hard drives in RAID 1. These two drives mirroring each other in case one ever fails. So these two drives should have a maximum write speed of like 150 megabytes per second pretty slow. Except I have a 10 gigabit network and look at this transfer go. When I go into the Ugreen's back end, you can see too that the network is able to plow over 600 megabytes per second over the line, even though the hard drives are each only writing at about 160 megabytes per second. How is this possible? It's writing this giant file directly into RAM. Then if we fast forward to when the transfer is done, you can see that from my Mac's perspective, the file has been transferred. It's over. And you can confirm that there's no more network traffic going into the NAS. And yet here are these two hard hard drive still dutifully writing that file, which means it let me transfer the whole thing over, the whole 22 gigabytes, at whatever max speed that my network would allow at the time, into this thing's 32 gigs of RAM. And then it's just slowly trickling from the RAM cache into the drives. That's genius! For even further confirmation of what it's doing, if I go over into the memory tab of the Ugreen dashboard thing, you can see 29 gigabytes of cached RAM. So essentially, now that I have 32 gigs of RAM in here instead of the eight gigs that it came with, I will always have pretty reliable about 24 gigabytes of extremely fast disk space, even if I'm transferring to the hard drives and not the NVMe drive. So even the hard drives in here are gonna feel really fast as long as the files are smaller than whatever RAM is not being used doing something else. Moving into the software side of this thing, it's got a whole bunch of its own apps for things like photo albums, music sharing. I'm pretty sure Jellyfin is a lot like Plex, but since I have a Plex server already going on my Mac mini back there and my Synology NAS, this machine does let you run Docker. And in Docker, I have a container running Plex. And it looks like, I haven't set it up yet, but it looks like in the container section of the Docker app, you can just search for and download pre-made containers for things like a Minecraft server or whatever else you people do in Docker. I'm gonna stay away from talking too much about things that I don't actually use and don't really understand. This also runs virtual machines. So there's also this thing called Cloud Drive, which lets you connect your Google Drive and your OneDrive. So you can keep a local copy of everything you keep on those, or you can just download the whole thing and cancel those services since you have your own cloud now. You can also use this as a way to share giant files over the internet. If you've got something that's too big to email and you wanna send it to someone or send it to yourself if you're not at home, you can go into files, you can find the file you wanna to send to someone, right click on it, go to share, and then you can make a link that's either good for a certain date or good forever, where someone with that link can download that file straight out of your box and straight into their computer over the internet. Going back out of the box, it's got an SD card slot on the front. It's got a little spring mechanism. And if you put a card in here, it automatically prompts you to look at it if you're on the web interface. And you can pull files off it from there, move them onto the drives or reformat it. But you can also mount this card onto your computer over the network through the NAS. Same goes for external drives. There's a USB-C on the front. So if you've got some other drives that you wanna get at, or you just wanna expand this thing's storage even further. You can just plug them in. This box has a USB-C on the front as well as a USB-A 3.2 on the front and one of those on the back. It also has two USB 2, I guess, for a keyboard and mouse, because there's also a monitor port. But anyway, whatever you plug into the USB-Cs will just pop up and you can either mount them on your desktop or get to them through the web interface and mess with the files, however you see fit. You'll also notice there are two separate ethernet jacks back here. There's a 10 gig one and a 2.5 gig one. And you can actually hook these both up at the same time to two different networks. So if you have a small office and I don't know, your video team needs ridiculously fast access, but your office guys only need to look at, I don't know, maybe CAD files or something. Or I guess if you want different sets of permissions for different networks, one box can serve two networks simultaneously. And finally, there is an HDMI port on the back. And when I plug that into a monitor, a screen popped up telling me to download the phone app where you can access the NAS over your phone and play video files directly to the screen that's connected to the box. So I guess if you don't have a smart TV, you could use this as a direct connection to a TV and have it be a multimedia server that way. You can also use that app to look at stats for the machine or share files or even watch movies and TV shows right on your phone, which is 
good for pooping. This NAS holds a ton of big, slow hard drive data, a bunch of super fast NVMe data, the RAM is upgradable, it has a reasonably fast processor, especially when compared to cheaper ones, and a very, very fast network. Then it's also got a pretty huge fan, and so far, I'm a pretty huge fan of it. Goodbye. Starbucks. I'm <laughs> like...